Yo, what's good, everyone? Too Fast 18 back. Another Epic 7 video. Um, I just want to give my thoughts, really and truly, on this uh, patch that came out. I know y'all see this, he's Cybalona, but uh, I'm going to do another video for that for summoning. Um, I actually finally got an emulator going to so I can beat Abyss 90 to get these gold transmits so we can do some moonlights as well. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? But anyway, one thing I main thing I want to talk to you about these ML um nerfs basically. What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Alright, so now I want people to know that these uh hero balancing won't be put into the game until September 5th. So you got like a whole nother month basically. Which kinda sucks, but hey, at least they give us time, you know? They prolonged the shit, but they gave us time. Anyway, we're going to skip all this, of course. Everyone wants to know, should they recall their Moonlight Heroes? And I'm going to tell you, because, you know, I get straight to the point with this stuff. Silver Blade or Amenther. This is nothing. What they did to her was nothing. I was expecting these ML uh, five stars to be nerfed to the point of, like, their legs are chopped off. Like, like you know that nigga from SpongeBob always go, my leg. Like, that nigga, I expected that to be the outcome. But nah, like, this is slight, bro. Her cooldown is increased by one. By one, B. And then her combat readiness, you know, she lose 10%. Like, nigga, she still has it. Like, she's still going to be moving out here on the battlefield. So, do not recall her. If you re if you have her, or if you do get her and you recall her, you bugging, B. Don't do that shit. All right. So... Yeah, she's still going to do it. You know, you have Ethic Acceptor that can go with her to help with the cooldown. But she going to be... Uh, she's good, bro. Don't recall. Just don't. Don't do it. Now, the biggest nerf, in my opinion, is this guy. Reason I say biggest, because the way all the others are done, his is more impactful in a way. And I'll show you what I mean. So... The move that everybody hates, of course, is the S2, which, you know, strips and put everyone to sleep. So afterwards, I'm not going to read it before. Afterwards, you attack all enemies by summoning storm clouds with A5, max 100% chance to dispel one. Let me say that again. One buff. Okay, before he dispelled two, that's what made this nigga stupidly annoying, in my opinion. Now he only does one. Now I know you're probably thinking to yourself, like, well, nigga, it's only like fucking wheel gear you could put. Trust me, they're gonna implement more. I mean, they're a copy of a fucking game called Summoner's War, which has uh, shield runes and shit like that. They're gonna implement all that shit. Trust and believe me, G. This later on is gonna be more impactful. I mean, you got even MLCC and shit like that. You know what I mean? So, if you got Will and MLCC on the team, that's two buffs you're starting out with. He only gets the strip one. Plus, plus, this man, his counter, like I was telling people in the guild, is a goddamn three-star. His counter is legit a three-star. Unless they nerf her, her it, he, he's like, eh, to me, dog. Sure, really, truly. Really. Montmo counters this nigga hard body. No joke. So anyways, um, one buff and a 65% max 80% chance to put them to sleep. If this skill is available, increase the comment readiness by 10% instead of the 15, maximum 20 instead of 25 at the end of the enemy's turn. They increase the cooldown for four turns. So, you know, with Ethic of this this man was a fucking crackhead. So he was like putting you to sleep and stripping like like a monster so if you have even like crimson arm and stuff like that that give the two buffs invincibility and will um and, and immunity now you have a chance of him just only stripping the fucking invincibility not putting you to sleep or just stripping the fucking will and still not putting you to sleep you know you have great chance montmo is gonna crush this man anyway so i think of all the recalls because i don't use him you know, not saying that he's a bad hero. Of course he's not. He gives a lot of people problems, but I don't need him at this point, especially with this bizarre buff coming and Seaside Bologna. She's already out, but what she does, I, I, I don't really need him at this point. For me, at least, this is from my perspective. He's my least used five star. He sits on defense and just do 
defense stinks. You know what I mean? You still be losing a lot, but I don't use a man on offense like that, bro. So why, why, why? I, I'm, I'll get back to that. Anyways, Arbiter Vildred, he's like the main focus because this motherfucker is cancer, bro. So his after is after receiving lethal damage, caster regenerates 70, maximum 100% health, 100% combat readiness, full focus, and reset cooldown for Dark Blade. So he loses the increased attack for two turns. We all know that, right? So this is him done right in my opinion that attack for two turns was so fucking crazy that you know it was wiping even bruiser or tank comps easily like nigga if you you remember you know molong molong from fucking um what do you call summoner's war it's like when you at 70 percent and he does reckless assault your unit is gone blood and if he's gone right if he's gone that means what you you already down a fucking unit. This man was literally with this thirty with this attack for two turns. If you at seventy percent, if he's not, if you don't have like hella HP and Crimson Armin and Arius and shit like that, MLCC maybe your team is dead. So with the remove the attack now, he, he his right purpose, which I felt should have been all along, is that he's just there to fuck over Cleave teams. Now you can go in there with your ML Kens, mm -hmm, with your fucking Ken. With your Charles, all these people, and smack this dude, bro. Smack him. Okay? I'm glad, man. I'm tired of these people that, that claim that they're so fucking nice in this game because they got fucking Arbiter of Eldred, Thinking that they just so fucking good. I, I want to see now. I really want to see now when Season 3 come out if you're going to see those people up there, bro. Trust me. He's probably going to be a problem in the lower ranks and shit like that, but I guarantee you it's gonna be a major difference in the fucking high rank trust me all right so next up is crimson armin so crimson armin um decreased damage received by allies from a critical hit by 10 percent, maximum 15 percent. before it was 20 percent to 30 percent. right so they basically chopped that shit in half when more than one damage reduction is granted only strongest effect is applied so that's the same um her that was her s2 the passive and her s3 cover all allies in the aura of holy spirit grants immunity for two turns and events will be for one turn so it used to be three turns immunity now it's two turns i mean it's whatever <laughs> i mean i know that three turns was a, an issue but it's whatever it ain't like they increased the cooldown of the move itself so it's whatever she's still viable am i gonna recall her hell nah because i mean they didn't take out the effect of, or they didn't nerf Arius itself. You know what I mean? So this is still powerful. It still stacks. So it's still viable. I mean, <laughs> it's still viable, bro. So I'm keeping my Crimson Armor for damn sure. Still fucking viable. But I think it's, you know, you could more so like uh, cleave it more or even like, you know, it, it won't be a long ass battle like. I hated these long ass five minute battles, bro. All right, so Moonlight Recall. So we're not even gonna jump into that. You know, that's something all you guys can read for yourselves and shit like that. But the main thing was my opinion on these ML units. So in my opinion, all Arbiter Villager, Crimson Armin, Sage, and uh, Silverblade Armenta. Out of all of them, I think Sage got the biggest nerf. I know some people are gonna be like Crimson Armin get the biggest nerf, but trust me, you will still see. I guarantee you're gonna still see Crimson Armin in high rank arena because yes, fifteen percent is still a good amount. You know what I mean? It's still a good amount. They didn't do shit to Ori, so it's still gonna stack. You know, if you got the right stats in general, you fucking add that Ori on there, she's still reducing the amount of damage by a good amount. This guy though, just the one buff and the increase in the cooldown as well. Like I was saying below, uh, with, um, what's her name? Uh, ML Ara. It's fucking, it, it, it's, it, it, you got Ethica Scepter, you know, to deal with stuff like that. But just the fact that now there's a chance where he can't cut your cleave team. And that if you have uh, MLCC in my opinion, or just Mont Mo. I mean, the, the guy that one that won D spell. You know, in long running battles that used to be cancer. Like whatever you put up, he's still just gonna have a chance to D spell that shit. All of it. Now that's not the case. 
So easier to kill him, easier to counter him. I'm probably going to re-roll him personally because I didn't use him a lot. Who am I going to re-roll him for? I don't know yet. It's it's going to be a toss-up between, honestly, uh, Corvus? <laughs> or, yeah, it's going to be a toss-up between Corvus or probably Ro because they, they're still not getting any true counters. I'll be honest with you. Like... <laughs> Unless they're gonna nerf them in the future, they're not getting any true counters. So, but that's my thought on that. You know, straight to the point as usual. Um, I will be doing a summoning video as well for Seaside Bologna. I just want to get these gold transmit, which I'm gonna get today, boy. Um, and I'm gonna do a full summoning video, and hopefully I can uh, get some new Moonlight Heroes as well. But uh, that's it for this one, man. I'll catch y'all later. You already know. Like, comment, subscribe, all that bullshit. And I'll catch y'all next one.